In today's video, we are going to gamble. More specifically, we are going to be spectating Angela and Brayden playing a game of Steal the Chips, which has the following rules. First, each person is going to begin with N poker chips, where N is a positive integer. The game proceeds as follows. In every turn, either Angela or Brayden is going to be selected with equal probability, and the selected person must immediately give one of his or her chips to the other person. The game is going to end when one person has all two N chips. That is the most exciting game I have ever heard of, but what do we wish to find? We wish to show that the expected number of turns until the game ends is I'm not sure if any of us expected this, n squared. Before we begin, I want to point out two things. First is that the game is going to end, it's not going to go on infinitely, which is very good, because we do not want to watch this game proceed for an infinite amount of time. The second thing is that this is essentially a special formulation, in terms of expected value, of a well-known phenomena called Gambler's Ruin which is essentially steal the chips, except each person may have a different number of poker chips, and we are more concerned with the probability of Angela winning or Brayden winning instead of the expected number of turns until the game ends. And Wikipedia, in my opinion, presents a clear intuitive argument for why the game must eventually end, the probability the game must eventually end is 1, and to summarize the argument, we're going to take a look at probability that, let's say, Angela is selected 2n times in a row. After 2n turns, the probability that Angela was selected in every single one of them is quite low. But after like 10 to the 100th power times n turns, then it is much more likely that Angela was selected 2n times in a row somewhere within the 10 to the 100th power times n turns. And as we do more and more turns, the probability that someone was selected 2n times in a row is going to increase to 1, and if that happens, the game is going to end. So in this video, we will take it for granted that the expected number of turns until the game ends is finite but we will prove that it is in fact n squared. Now, we are almost ready to officially start, but let us recognize two important people before we begin. First of all, I'd like to recognize Garb Kurana for proposing this problem, and Marco Brezzi for being the very first person to post a correct solution to this problem last week. A huge shout out to both Garb Kurana and Marco Brezzi. Turning our attention back to the problem, Note that as the game proceeds, one person is always going to have k chips, so here's Angela, and here's Brayden. And as the game proceeds, some person is always going to have k chips, while the other person is going to have 2n minus k chips. So let's say at some point of the game, Angela has k chips and Brayden has 2n minus k chips. From there, in the next turn, there are two possibilities. First, Angela may gain a chip and Brayden may lose a chip. Or, Angela could lose a chip and Brayden could gain the chip. And this may make us realize that if we know the expected number of turns until the game ends, when Angela has k chips and Brayden has 2n minus k chips, and let's denote that by mu sub k, then we can find a relationship between mu sub k and mu sub k plus 1 and mu sub k minus 1. And by forming this relationship, we are going to be able to potentially deduce what the expected number of turns is going to be when Angela has n chips and Brayden has n chips, which is mu sub n. So we wish to find mu sub n, so let us start by thinking in terms of mu sub k. To begin with, realize that mu sub k, so the expected number of turns until the game ends, if Angela has k chips, is going to be equal to this. First, we are going to take a turn to decide whether Angela or Brayden is going to be selected. And from there, we either have to go mu sub k plus 1 more turns until the game ends with one half probability, or we have to go mu sub k minus 1 more turns with one half probability. Now, there are two things we should realize. First, that mu sub 0 and mu sub 2n are both going to be 0. B 
because if Angel has a 0 or 2 and chips, she has won the game. Another thing, and perhaps much more important to our intuition, is that mu sub k must be equal to mu sub 2 and minus k by the symmetry of the situation. Because the expected number of turns until the game ends, when Angel has k chips and Brayden has 2 and minus k chips, has to be the same as the expected number of turns until the game ends, when Angela has 2 and minus k chips and Brayden has k chips. So from this, we know mu sub k, for example, cannot be equal to k, because then mu sub 2 and minus k is equal to 2 and minus k, and 2 and minus k and k do not have to be the same. So this symmetry is helping us deduce what mu sub k could possibly be. Something you may say is mu sub k could be some constant, but that does not make sense, because the game is much more likely to end faster if Angela has one chip compared to when she has two chips, when n is equal to, for example, 10. So mu sub k cannot be constant. So what's the least complicated possibility for mu sub k given that mu sub k is not constant. And something that may pop into your mind is that mu sub k may be k times 2n minus k. Now let's check if mu sub k actually satisfies our equation. And to do so, we wish to check that k times 2n minus k is equal to 1 plus 1 half times mu sub k plus 1, which is going to be k plus 1 times 2n minus k minus 1, plus 1 half times mu sub k minus 1, which is k minus 1 times 2n minus k plus 1. And realize that we can have we can have 1 half times k times 2n minus k and 1 half times k times 2n minus k. So when those come together, we are going to get k times 2n minus k. But we have more terms to worry about. We have a plus 1. We have a 1 half times k times minus 1. So we have a negative k, and we have a 1 half times 1 times a 2n minus k minus 1. So we also have to add 2n minus k minus 1. And on this side, using the same argument, we need k plus 1, so plus k, and the minus 1 times this entire thing, minus 2n plus k minus 1. And here we have a minus k minus k plus k plus k cancelling out, 2n and minus 2n cancelling out, so we have k times 2n minus k plus 1, plus 1 half times negative 2, which is a minus 1, and that cancels out. So we have the equality as we desire. And since the expected value must be unique, we know this is the unique solution to this recurrence relation. So we have found mu sub k. We know mu sub k is equal to k times 2n minus k, and we know our solution is mu sub n when both of them are starting with n chips. So what is our final answer? Mu sub n is going to be n times 2n minus n. And that is going to be n squared. And we are done.